Evening. Good evening, Shay. Good evening, Brianna. 6.29 p.m. 6-2-2019. That's the date. Oh, okay. Is Today. It? Oh, it is. You're right. Yeah, I'm reading it on my computer screen, I so know. it's got to be true. Yeah, must be true. How are you doing over there, you little with my spitfire? With my, I don't know. Oh, my word. With my giant... Um, my giant drink over here. Oh, yeah. Over Our here. drinks are s- something special today. There, There's a lot of booze in there, so if I... Yeah, s- well, you can't taste it. Yeah. Well, if I, you will hear it because you'll hear me slur through the, <laughs> my the fucking thing I'm part first. of the thing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So today, let's just talk about that. Today, guys, we are drinking what kind of fruit? We're drinking daiquiris it's because daiquiris. we had to yeah. buy Kraken for last week's drink. So we're going to be making some rum drinks to get rid yep. of that. For a while. Because we okay. ain't cracking open bottles of rum all the time. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Unless we're making dirty horchatas. Oh, yeah. Those were delicious. With rum. So anyway, we made, they're like peach, mango, strawberry. Some, pa- yeah. Fucking papaya. They're delicious. Magic. <laughs> Anamorphic dragon fruit. They're not as good as that dragon fruit. They surely aren't. But they're delicious. They are. I will say that. So I was in Denver yesterday, which Yo. we'll talk about a lot. Huh. Um, but I almost rode on one of those fucking scooter things, the birds. Dude, you should. Rachel, I've never done my it. Sister, I'm scared, kind of. No, my sister would kill me because I became one of those people. But um, I know um, Colonel is currently Colonel Mustard the cat is currently curling up on a Jansport backpack. He, he, hey, it is a North Face, okay? Oh well, that sucks. Um, Just kidding. North Face is probably no. I wrote on one of those. Um, I wrote like my cousin took us. We were in San Antonio and we were just like looking for something to do. You know, like a couple of thirty-year-olds. Um, and we didn't like go into a bar like a normal fucking adult and get a drink. We're like, let's go ride some fucking scooters. Oh um, yeah. So we went because I was like, those are fucking stupid. I don't. I'm not gonna do those because I. My sister talks about them all the time in Austin, and that they're like they just they just. Have you ever watched um the South Park episode on that? No. It's fucking hilarious how they just kind of like multiply and just appear everywhere, and they're just like oh. a nuisance to society, and they are, but. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, people literally just like lay them in the middle yeah, of the sidewalk. They do. It's like, don't it's, it's do that. It's just horrible. Um, but in in San Antonio, we like we took them and we went all the way from I can't I don't know the sections of the town, but we ended up like from one to the other, like to the, in like this area called the Pearl. Mm. Super fucking hipstery. So we were right on point with the scooters. Um, Everyone had a scooter. So we were on there like for like an hour and a half and it was like eight bucks for that entire time. So I'm like, dude, this is a cheap way to fucking just pass. And they were, around. they honestly, they were actually a lot of fun. So, they go fucking fast. Yeah, they do. So you get a little I'm drinks in you and you just play chicken with some potholes and it's pretty yeah, fun. Yeah, that's another thing. Like don't a bunch of drunk people just ride around on them? Mm-hmm. Isn't that really they make, dangerous? But I, they make you sign like a waiver. Before they, you have to like click on a, like a liability thing. But like if you, yeah, if you pretty much are stupid, that's not our fault. Go hey, fuck yourself. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So it's it's good. It's good. We don't so, cover stupidity. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. So that I didn't do that though. I oh, got a little well, you should have. You, you really missed out. It was a good time. Um, I did, however, go out dancing in Denver. Did you? Did you me and, feel me and a bunch of wieners? What? Did you feel a bunch of wieners? Yeah, there was a bunch. Did I touch a bunch of wieners? Hell no. Feel them, not touch them. That's different. No, I fucking booty checked them before they got near me. I was like, get off me. I'm dancing with my sister. They probably like that anyway. In my fucking cloak. That I just wearing. see you like. Pretending like you're Dracula on the dance floor. Oh, I was a little bit. I was like waving it around. Um, That's amazing. So I was chan. So I also I was in Denver because I saw a play Mm. called Wicked. Never heard of it. Actually, actually, actually. I don't know why I said that three times. Gonna be talking about today. Because there's no place like home. Did I say that three times? Oh, no. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Exactly. 
Um, yeah. So I went and saw Wicked, and I have this like black shawl thing. It's from Kmart. It's Adam Levine brand. Yeah, Kmart still exists. I first and of all, they sell clothes. First of all, yes. My first question was, where was this Kmart? In Fort Collins, the one that you think. Oh no. That one's shut down. No, it's definitely So gone. unless you got into a time uh, it was machine. It a ghost Kmart. Right? You went to like a fucking time machine or a ghost town. No, it town. was in Loveland. Okay. And then second of all. Adam Levine. Adam Levine. Clothing Not only brand. does he make clothes, he makes capes. It was like, it's like a shawl duster, if you will. But it has like, it's black and it has like little fringes on the bottom. So it's a little cloaky, little Stevie Nixie. Okay. So, I hope, did you see Lucy? I channeled her. Oh, no, you did. Uh, but no, she didn't go dancing with me last night. Dumb bitch. Uh, she was in my smoke cloud from the blunts we were smoking in the corner of the hotel parking lot. I knew it. I mean, what? I mean, that's legal. It is. The it's valet not. guy told us that's where we could go. Oh, well, then that's totally <laughs> legal. He's like, please let, take it me with fun. you. And then we were there for too long, and one of the other valet guys like rode around on his bike and kind of like looked at us, and we we're like, "Okay, we gotta go. We have to leave now." Um, also, the girl at the hotel, yeah, um, she had a she had some cool rings on. So, um, me and my sister always comment on people's jewelry if it's cool like that. Oh, and like so, just being a polite human being. Being polite, and yeah. then she, one of her rings like was an eyeball looking thing. And she was like, oh, yeah, that's an alligator's eyeball. What the taxidermied. fuck? Taxidermied. And we were like, oh, wow, that's fucking badass. She's like, yeah, I tried to get a human eyeball, but it, they're really hard to come by. I was like, uh... you're the host at the Marriott? I think she's like, she kind of likes making few people feel uncomfortable. Yeah, I feel like and we were trying she to was crack a joking. joke about it. And she was just like, your room number is 302. And well, not like crack a joke. We were just like, oh, damn. I could see why a human well, eyeball would be hard to come by. Well, I would have cracked she's a like, joke because yeah, I'm like, surely know. she's fucking she's kidding. Like she wasn't. Oh. She kind of seemed like a witch, too. But anyways, I was channeling my inner witch last night, and my saying was, I'm a witch, bitch. Oh, lovely. To my sister and yeah. myself. That's because you are. I'm a witch, bitch. Yeah, best. some guy tried to come over to me. I'm like, I'm a witch, bitch. Anywho. Anywho is this. Uh, what did you roll? What I rolled this week, week, I rolled <laughs> murder again. And I'm sure if you guys hate it, you can tell me about it, which is fine. Mm. Yeah, I'll accept it. But let me know. That you're doing murder again? Yeah. It's fine. They might you not roll, like it's it. It's the luck of the draw. I know, but still. It's just the roll of the dice. I know, but still. We could always re- roll again. You don't get that chance a lot in life, so... You're might as right, well exercise Shay. that right here, okay? I might have. <laughs> I mean, what? I mean, what? Um, and your story is pretty intense. My, you were telling me. Yeah, I'm gonna have to definitely. Yeah, I don't know. The everyone story, but... cover everyone likes little baby ears. If you don't like to hear about, well, it's kind of graphic. A little bit. I know. I don't go like into super grisly details, but enough that I'm like. Ugh. It's yeah. a little cringeworthy. It's a little cringeworthy. Definitely more cringeworthy. I mean. More than running with blood in your eyes. I was going to say, like, it's about getting your head knocked in with a pistol and having it be louder than a gunshot. Yes. Um, kind of. It's along those lines. It's a little rough. Mm. Some necrophilia going on. Mm. That's all I'll say about that. Great. Well. But you know, to each their own. life. <laughs> I, um. No. Hopefully not most people. That's part of nobody's life, literally. Well, My, one part. One per- person's part of their life. I guess I shouldn't say who this is, but I was talking to this woman. Yes. Um, do you know this the other day. woman? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, That's probably why you were talking to her. I know this lady. Nope, this is random lady. Just random lady. Um, but she was telling me that her brother, um, back in high school... Like, this was a long time ago. She's probably in her later, mid-60s. Okay. Uh, anyway, so she was telling me that her brother uh, got caught stealing. It was in Fort Collins. Stealing, like, robbing a grave. Oh. Stealing the bones. Those, like, he wanted the skull and some of the bones for, like, 
the fucking high school f- homecoming game. What? So he could like bring it to the crowds or something. And that's a felony. So like the FBI like came to their house no and shit. shit. And um, she was like, yeah, my brother was kind of a, Fucked a up. bad seed. Oh. He's not around no more. Was he but, in the prisons? No, he died. Oh. But I think. How? He died of alcoholism and Ugh. some fucked up shit. No shit. Ugh, that's yeah, but he gross. robbed a fuck. He robbed a grave out in Fort, in Fort Collins somewhere. It's like, and he did it. It's like poor little Slackjaw. Yeah, maybe it was. Mm. No, that was Cheeseman, so it must not have been Slackjaw. No, it wasn't Slackjaw. But I'm just saying, like, it, it was just poor. Oh little, yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting his grave robbed. I Yikes. Yeah. Why would you bring that to a football? I just don't know what you would. To be, and also, can you imagine? Like, like that's your seventies. That's like your fucking future is like, oh yeah, no, I'm gonna die, and then somebody's gonna dig me up and like use my fucking skull for like a chip dip bowl or something. Yeah, I wonder whose uh, bones it was. I don't know. Maybe I'll ask her. Maybe. Hey, do you know the uh, person whose bones were dug up? And she's like, No, I'm gonna go see the grave now and not rob it. Dig them up again. Whoa, yikes. That's a oh, starfruit. Starfruit. This is just, yeah. Little Colonel Starfruit just Always. Oh. swiping on the mic. Yep. Thanks, buddy. Pink eye for everyone. Oh, God. Yeah, he slid little... almost to next Tuesday. He almost did, but not anyway. quite. Okay. All anyway, right. What did you roll? I rolled nostalgia. So I'm going to talk about Wicked because. Not only did I see it yesterday, which was fucking amazing. I've never seen it, and it was so good. If you guys don't know what Wicked is, it's a musical play. I would think they had all would have lived under a rock if they didn't know what that was. That's true. But some people don't. I don't know. Some people do not know about musicals. But That's, it is Wicked. Yeah, okay, yeah. So they probably know about that one. Yeah. Um, But I've been hearing about this play since high school, since my best girlfriends, specifically three of them, my two Laura's and Mm. Jamie, were in choir, and they loved this play and would sing. The whole thing? Yeah, they would sing it together, and then I learned the songs from them, and then also they did, I think they did a little performance in choir, like, and they had to all sing one of the songs. That's but anyways, nice. um, it just brought me back to my high school days with my best friends. Well, if that is a nostalgia, which is I don't know what hashtag is. Hashtag nostalgia. It is. So it is. that is why we are here. We are. Speaking about Wicked. We are. Wicked. wicked. It's going to be Wicked Awesome. There it is. There it is. Here we go. Um, All right. Well, cheers. Should we get into it? Oh, yeah. Are we, we going? Should. Yes. I think we should cheers. That was a good sound. Like, that was like if we had like hit our heads together. Yeah, that. W- <laughs> you guys, that was actually our heads clinking. Yep, that's exact. Just hollow as some goddamn logs. Uh, All right, we're on. Okay. <laughs> Ready for wicked? That's the sim- the sound. Is, it, is that the, of the that, segment? Uh, la, 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 la. That was not anything that had to do with the. Musical. It was like fucking it was, like Johnny Depp from the Willy Wonka horrendous remake. That was the worst remake. Mm. Did you see Aladdin? Oh wait, you haven't yet. You were the only oh, person. Oh, I forgot we were. I was. That was what I. That you know what? It was so bad that I. Shay, no one has said that to me. I hated it. I heard it was really good. It wasn't it sure wasn't. It was really cheesy. It was. You know what? I take that back. No, I don't. I, I, I stand firm in what I say. However, it was like I was watching, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just my observation. It was like I was watching something that was supposed to be done like on a live stage. Like if that was done like on a Broadway musical, that would have been phenomenal to me. And that's how it was like how the, the whole, how all the scenes well, were set up. isn't it a Broadway musical? It probably is. Everything and nowadays so they, is yeah. like, but yeah. So that's. Legally Blonde? Like right. what? No, I, anyway. Don't get me started. I heard it's good. I've actually heard that one. It's pretty good. <laughs> I didn't go to watch a live stage production. And that's what I felt like it was. I did not like Will Smith as the genie. Not because I was comparing him to Robin Williams. I just didn't. 
I was like, eh, it was I over don't, the top. It was just over the top, and it wasn't like a Will Smith character to me. So I like, I don't, I don't like, I don't, I don't like Will Smith. I don't dislike Will Smith. I just didn't float your boat. It didn't float my boat, and he's a funny guy. Like I love a lot of his shit, but I, I also think I also think love that him. he was the funniest guy in the room too, and he plays off really well. Not to say that they those were other like they were bad actors. It yeah. was just a different dynamic, and I feel like he was he had a lot of good moments. I will say that, mm-hmm. but then it was like those moments would fall flat for me because it was like he had nobody to play them off at. So I don't know. I just didn't think it was. I just didn't think it was good. I really didn't. All right. Well, you're the first so, person that has seen it that I know that has not liked it. I just didn't like it, man. It's okay. I don't Sometimes know. Sometimes you just, I just can't I, like things. But I'm definitely going to go see it because yeah, Aladdin was one of my first boyfriends. So. And you know what? I think for me, too, it was my all-time favorite Disney movie so it was as just, a kid. It was my, my t- it was like my you know, top, besides Lion King, because come on, it's fucking Lion King. But like Aladdin was like right behind Lion King. It was my favorite movie. And I just... Itch. Okay, I, I get it because yeah. I was, everyone loved Jungle Book and I honestly did not. That's fair. I was The live action Jungle Book. I thought Jungle Book, but see, I like Jungle Book in its own like little right. But no, I, I didn't, I didn't like, was like, I wasn't like, oh my God, I have to own this movie and this is so amazing. Mm. Lion King, I think it's going to be a little bit different, but it I. fucking better be, it has to be. Right. But I mean, I just thought, I did not, I, I wasn't like praising Jungle Book, but I thought Jungle Book was way better than like what this Aladdin was. I know. And again, okay, because you know what? Because again, it was like, it was like I was watching a play okay. and that's fine for what that is. But I didn't go to watch play like Aladdin. The cartoon seemed more of a theatrical movie than that did. And not like, oh, a, like a play. It. Okay. That's what I think I was missing. And got I don't, it. I'm like, if I want to go see a fucking play, I'll go see a fucking play. Just like I did. And I'm about to talk about. Okay. You can go now. Speaking of plays. Bum ba da dum bum ba da dum ba da dum bum ba da. Make way for wicked, yes. That was amazing. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to just, get that other microphone. I in know the it's, face. it's gonna be pretty. Epic. We should just, that, It's gonna be like a forty-five minute riff of you just like singing Drake songs. Oh, perfect. Anywho, so let's talk about wicked bitches. You fucking witches. <laughs> perfect. Go on. And wizards. Mm-hmm. I'm cracking myself up over here. Okay, so Wicked, let's Into talk about track. it, is a Broadway musical with the music and lyrics by a man named Stephen Schwartz and a book by Winnie Holzman. So, a book. Um, and she actually created the show. I don't know if you remember this. It's called My So-Called Life from the 90s. Yeah, I think I remember. No, I think I'm thinking of Grounded for Life. Mm, well, it was... A You're little like, 90s, I don't know what like, that is. teenage on. drama show called My So-Called Life. And then she also wrote um, on a show called 30-something, which is that's, from the 80s. That sounds some, so That sounds really familiar. Yeah. So, anyways, just wanted to share that because 30-something, 30-ish. Because cool we're, we're 30-ish. Yeah. Yeah, we're 30-somethings. I just made that connection. So, I'm sorry. I'm getting a little sauce. I'm getting a little assholey. Anyway, go on. I'm almost done with that because it tastes like nothing except juice Hashtag and smoothies. Hashtag juice. Hashtag sponsorship. So Wicked tells the story of two unlikely friends. A f- oh, wait. Now I have to say her name. <laughs> That's not her name. Sure it is. Elphaba, the Wicked Witch of the West, and Galinda. Elphaba? Mm-hmm. Well, no wonder she became evil. And I don't know if that's Gal- really what happened. Galinda, whose name later changes to Glinda the Good Witch, which it's the little funny part of the play, but I won't talk about why she's original. Her real name is Galinda. OK. OK. So the story centers around um, Elphaba. And if you guys like the Wizard of Oz shit, OK, Wicked Witch of the West, get it. You get it. OK, cool. I didn't have to tell that to anyone. Erase that. Nope. The story centers around <laughs> Alphaba, a misunderstood green-skinned girl who grows up to become the notorious Wicked Witch of the West. She's smart, she's fiery, she's super misunderstood, and she ex- but she also possesses an extraordinary talent unlike any of the other kids have. So she pretty much... They're like teenagers in this show. This- okay, so she pretty much, she was the chick that just like listened to like Atlantis Morissette 
Ironic. Yeah, she on was repeat. like emo. Okay, got it. All right. She was kind of like a goth. She was like a goth kind of, okay. you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I got, I'm on board um, with that. And then she meets. It was me. <laughs> um, and then she meets bubbly blonde Galinda, who's exceptionally popular, very rich, very superficial, kind of like a little valley girl. Perfect, so prim and proper. One. Perfect, good. We all know Glinda. who you are, Ashley. Uh oh. I'm just kidding. Oh. Am I though? Um. <laughs> so oh. yeah, that's. Give Glinda. me more daiquiris, please. Um, okay. So wait, they were not sisters. They're not sisters. Okay. No, they're I, actually friends. I, did, they I meet, didn't know that. They meet in school. I also feel like I'm yelling at you, and I'm really sorry, but I think these headphones are just super. I'm sorry, oh, my fine. really good headphones are working really well. Oh, you're. How asshole do I? How Galinda do I sound like? You little good. Witch. My equipment is working too good. How is your poor man's equipment over there? <laughs> Whatever, you got it all, so I'm not complaining. I just feel like I'm being an asshole. All right, you're not moving on. You sound wonderful, and so do I. I, I. You do. Um, so a fel- alphaba. So they meet at this um, their high school. It's called Shiz Academy. Shiz Academy. Um. Like anyways, Shazam. so they because they're witches. What? Like Shazam? Oh, they're witches. that's he's. I guess he's a wizard. Was Shazam a wizard? Shazam was a genie, and he was, he was a amazing. genie. Yeah, yeah, not a witch. No, 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 no. no. Alakazam, that's what you're thinking of. That's no. what witches say. Witches do not reg. say that. They get on their brooms and stuff. Witches, they say, they say like um, they they speak in rhymes and make spells. They do. They don't really. I'm not. I'm just being an. I'm being not funny, but like it's. I know people actually practice witchcraft up there. They do more than that. So please don't cast a spell on me. Okay, bye. I put a spell on you. Like the hocus pocus. Put a good spell on us, witches. Alakazam. I don't, I think like 1950s witches say that. Yeah. Which are witches. The sword and the the stone. That's why. The sword and the stone. And she was a witch. And, but the wizard went Alakazam and he changed them into like squirrels and shit. Oh yeah. All the squirrels. (laughs) The squirrels, Ugh. not squirrels. Oh, I thought you said he changed them into swirls. I was like, I guess there were some swirly cartoons when they poofed out of the air. Oh, That's God. true, too. Anyway, go on. Oh, my God. Boss. Okay, so Glinda's a little bitch, basically. Clearly. She's like a little stuck-up little, like, mm-hmm. I'm the best, prim and proper. I got that pig nose I'm done. Glinda. Yeah. Um, so their initial rival, so they end up being rivals and they end up like, they actually sing a song together about how they absolutely loathe each other. Oh, that's um, a nice song. It sounds like it's going to be about like love. About but like then friendship. They end up, and like, yeah, but then it's all about it's like, like how you're they absolutely a bitch and love. you're a bitch and you're a C word. Yeah. Exactly. That There's a lot of cussing in this play, except that there's not. Oh, really? That's there are a lot of Ozisms though, where they just like make up weird like English words and add weird things to. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's fun. It's pretty cute. Anyway, yes. So, so they sing a love-hate their song. initial rivalry turns into the unlikeliest of friendships, until so they become best friends, and then um, until some crazy shit happens, and the world of Oz decides to call one of them good and the other one wicked. <laughs> Perfect. So um, they also, they struggle with their opposing personalities and view, viewpoints. Um, they have a rivalry over the same love interest. Um, they have reactions to the wizard's corrupt government and un, and ultimately Ophelba's public fall from grace. Ooh. So this musical was actually adapted from a book. I know I told you that. So they made a play and then they, okay. So the play is based off this first book that was um, published in 1995 by a man named Gregory Maguire, and it was called Wicked, The Life and Times of the Wicked Witch of the West. And then from, so when they wrote the play, together this man wrote a book, because the play is a little different than the book right? that it's based on. So they wrote a book about the play, like the play book. <laughs> Does that make sense? Sure. Anyway. It doesn't matter. 
So this orig- this book was um, published in 1995, and it's the story behind what we know from the novel The Wonderful Wizard of Oz and its sequels and then the movie. So the, no- the novel was actually written in um, 1900, the novel Wizard of Oz. The Wonderful oh. Wizard of Oz is what it's called. And the film was made in 1939. Just little fun facts for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so unlike the popular 1939 movie, um, Wicked is not for children. It contains adult language. The book. It contains adult language and content, including violent imagery and sexual situations. <laughs> the play is very kid friendly. Um, little hocus but there's a pocus, little love. You know what I mean? There's little love triangles and fucking twists and turns that you'd never expect. Um, the novel is a political, social, and ethical commentary on the nature of good and evil, um, and takes place in the land of Oz in the years leading to Dorothy's arrival. And that's pretty much what the musical is about too. And it's the told from the perspective of Glenda and Ethel. Alphaba. Alphaba. It's like she was trying to say alphabet. I know. That's what it's I was weird. thinking. But I'll tell you how they got the name. Okay. Because in the book, in the movies, she ain't got no name. There's, she's just the Wicked Witch of the West because she's a Wicked Witch, isn't she? Or oh, is she? Nobody knows. Apparently her mom had a stroke when she was naming her. Her mom fucking had some Something. a stroke having her. She birthed out a green baby. That was one of the scenes in the play. Ugh. Yeah. Because she cheated on her husband with this mysterious man who gave her a green vial to drink. And they, like, did it. And then she got pregnant with Elphaba, who's can, a green lady. Can I would, okay. So that's how they explain that she's green, is that it's because she had some crazy jungle juice, or the mom did, and then she got a green yep. baby. Can you imagine if yeah. that happened in real life? It does. Just tied this is a real life story. Oh, I forgot. It's a biography. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that'd be fucked up. <laughs> Can you be like? It's like the ultimate like fucking scarlet letter for a poor child if they were like from like <laughs> made out of like a fucking affair. Like, oh Jesus. Well, she's green. Well, she's blue. She's a little neon and sapphirey, but <laughs> it's fine. Anyway, so um, That's racist. Gregory Maguire's um, book, in his book, he uses the world of Oz to question bureaucracy, religion, power, and various other issues in society today. Oh. Again, all these There's little subliminal messaging and always. little hidden innuendos. Innuendos? Innuendos? Out you windows. More windows. <laughs> just so keep, Just keep going. Um... He, one of his, he, words are hard. Try to find the alphabet. That was alphabet. me magically I know, like, away when I just tried to say. Focus, focus. He, he proves in his book how the system, the system can create even larger issues like civil disobedience, rebellion, and possibly even terrorism. That was a little radical. Oh, a little it's bit. Not, I don't think it was talking about how people will start being terrorists yeah. But I mean, it shows like what a uh, you know someone in power can yeah. manipulate. Oh, that's a fair. I get that group of people. Mm-hmm. In this case, the Aussians to think because the of Aussians. certain situations. Sounds pretty fucking cool. Yeah, it's fuck. It's f- so Sa- good and it's hilarious. Sounds like like an Ozzy Osbourne fan though. What? Like a bunch of Ozzy Osbourne fans. Oh, probably. The there's a bunch of tatted up ladies. There's a bunch of kids. There's a bunch of old people. I love it. It was a big group of people. It was fun. Sweet. And by big group, I mean eclectic. There was one little girl that was dressed like a 1940s witch, and it was the cutest thing I've ever seen. That's adorable. He was. So um, Gregory Maguire has, was quoted saying, I became interested in the nature of evil and whether one – really could be born bad. I considered briefly writing a novel about Hitler, but when I realized that nobody oh. had ever written about the second most evil character in our collective American subconscious, the Wicked Witch of the West, I thought, had experienced a small moment of inspiration. So he was going to basically, like, was he going to write a book about Hitler being okay? First of all, 
Yes. So I'm really glad he didn't choose to write that First, story because yes. I think I, a lot of people I would be a little I completely agree upset. with that. When was this book made? What did you say again? The book was... Um, the novel was 1995. Okay, so in 1995, I like that he was like, okay, Hitler's like the the first bad guy that we think about. Who's the next one? You know who it is? That <laughs> fictional character, the Wicked Witch of the West. Not anybody else. That's just funny to me. Yeah, anyway, go on. Uh, we're glad you went with your second choice, Greg. Let's go with that green lady that nobody remembers and it was kind of scared about, but like we just knew that we could just throw some water back, water on her back in the 1930s to get her to go away. Second. Easy second. Yeah, exactly. Or like 300. It's a no brainer. Yeah. So. No offense. Let's sir. go back to the musical again. Okay. So the story opens up with a Felba, an average young girl who happens to have green skin. Right away, there's a clear distinction between Elf, I'm sorry, Elphaba and the other people of Oz. And on numerous occasions, Elphaba is discriminated against. And to make matters worse, the great Wizard of Oz endorses segregation and stereotyping of various ethnic groups of animals. And, and yeah. she's green. Because it's like a magic, the Oz is a magical place. Like animals talk and all this stuff. Yeah, they have horses of different colors. They do. They really do. That's a horse of a different color. It was a very insane special effect that they did back then. It was amazing. In the movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. They Jesus, that was Brianna. Sorry, I was like reading while <laughs> you were like, talking. You're like, what? Trying to be... No, anyway. yes. I, I actually, when I um got my wisdom teeth out, um, I had dreams when I was like under on laughing gas or whatever. Yeah. And the only thing I remember about my dream was it was a collide. I'm not fucking joking around. It was a kaleidoscope background, and then that horse from the Wizard of Oz, it was like one of the soldiers on it was just like blinking the different colors. That was like a dream. That was just like a dream I had. But that was like all that was going on. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's amazing. That was in like eighth grade. That's amazing. Um, So perfect. So as the story continues, Alphaba interacts with Glenda, as I've told you, at Shiz University. That's what it's called. Shiz. So Glinda, like many students at, sh- at, sh- at the Shiz, at the sh- is a typical spoiled private school student. And Alphaba, however, is on a scholarship and there to also watch after her sister Nessa, who's actually in a wheelchair. Um, and then there's an obvious class division between Alphaba and most of the students at the Shiz. They like make fun of her all the time. And, and she's a different um, color. And she's a different color, yeah. There it is. And she also, when she gets mad, that's when some like weird stuff starts to happen. Like a couple instances happen with that. Anyways, well, so. I should stop picking on her because everyone's a bunch I of know. assholes. Exactly. So um, Glenda actually ends up trying to be, is one of the only people that ends up trying to be nice to her. Because she first does something really mean to her that I won't tell you about. Okay. And then she like feels like a piece of shit about it because she is. And then she actually, that's when they become friends is she like reaches out to her and then they, they also have to be roommates and it's really cute. Anyways, so there's this other um, situation that occurs at the shiz. Um, while in Dr. Dilliman's class, he's like this really awesome like goat teacher who teaches them a lot about different things. He's an actual goat. Um a student was found to have written and on the like he's like teaching the class and he like flips his chalkboard over and one of the students had written animals should be seen not heard and it's quite a polarizing statement and one that was encouraged by the government at the time and like in the land of Oz at this time right. some of the animals are like randomly not being able to they're starting to not be able to talk and they start like just making their animal noises instead oh they're going back and they're like what the they're, fuck's going on in Oz devolving so outraged, Ophelba, who's actually invited to go see the wizard, um, takes her visit with the wizard as a perfect opportunity to tell him what's going on to see if she can put a stop to why these animals are getting, like, they're getting fired from their jobs of teaching and some of them are, like, starting to not be able to, like, talk anymore. Can you imagine, like, going to a break room and having, like, to share, like, the last donut with, our, like, a rhinoceros? Oh, that'd be badass. Like, in a tie and suit? And you're like, you know what? You have it. My top two superpowers would be 
I would want to fly and I'd want to talk to animals. How that's, badass would it be to talk to animals? That's one of my... You could get so much information. Yeah, that's like... That's a top superpower. I'd Yo, go I'd fly have. over there and tell me what the guy's doing, okay? <laughs> tell me where the crimes are. That's exactly. Eagle friend. Exactly. That's amazing. what I'd use it for good, obviously. Only for good. Never for evil. Hey, Eagle, go peck that bitch's hair. Head. Hair? Hair head. Pull it out. Pull right out. All right. Anywho. Go on. So... Yeah, so Elphaba goes to the wizard, and she brings Glinda with her. She's like, let's go to the city of Oz. And Glinda, Is she still Glinda at this? Glin, this is Glinda now. She changes her name to Glinda at this point, oh. but I won't tell you why. Damn it. I know. You're going to have to go watch the play. Um, I don't have $100, but okay. You have 100 lives. Okay. <laughs> what? So um, she brings Glinda with her. But, um, and they go and try and talk to the wizard, but he l- turns out to be maybe someone he doesn't seem to be, like we know. Like he literally is. Yeah. Um, so Alphaba, upon failing to convince the wizard to stop discriminating against these minorities, becomes a civil disobe- becomes a civil disobedient. Oh. And since no one else will stand up for and fight against this tyranny, Alphaba feels as though she must rebel for the good of the people, even if it means using violence, especially because she's always been an outcast and she knew like this was something that was wrong. Good on um, her. Good on Alphaba. So this was the turning point where she's in the like, play where Alphaba's it. like, I guess I'm just going to become what everyone else has named me to be, even though she wasn't that, but everyone already thought she was. And then the wizard ends up like riling people up. And so she's like, well, fine, I'm going to have to do this uh, by myself and I'll have to be viewed as evil, I guess. the old uh, nature versus nurture. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to now also talk about, I read a little interview with the, um, the writer of the p- musical. Yeah. And he had some interesting things to say. So one of the questions was, do you feel a special connection with the film that prompted you to read the book and then write the musical? And he s- obviously loved the wizard of Oz. So it obviously touched him. He said, but, um, he said, I think that what appealed to me more when I first came across Gregory Maguire's novel and was immediately smitten with the desire to adapt it as a musical as mm-hmm. its theme Um, one which has always fascinated me looking at a familiar story of characters from a different point of view and thus revealing that life is not as simple or as black and white as we tend to think that that and the fact that I've always been interested in stories of people who are perceived as different and feel themselves alienated from normal society many of my other shows deal with these themes but Wicked seemed to be seemed to me almost the perfect embodiment, which it really was like, it was such a amazing, like take on the story of wizard of Oz. And it was so clever and funny and like, just like dinosaurs really like paralleled, you know, what's going on in the world right now. And like what government and people can, you know, drive other people to do or like what it's like that um what is it called that mob mentality Mm -hmm. exactly um so there's another question how did you basically it was asking how did you get the audience to like both characters especially because it was the wicked witch of the west like right um and he said I think that in American musical theater and screenwriting these days, too much emphasis is often placed on having a hero and a villain, a good guy and a bad guy. Right. The truth is that people can often be honestly in conflict without one or the other being villainous. Very few people are completely and totally evil with the possible expectation or with the possible exception of vice president Cheney. That's literally what he said. Oh my God. (laughs) So all my collaborators and I did in writing Ophelba and Glinda was to try to understand them, get inside their heads and hearts and write each of them with her own point of view. And they really like it. It was, it was so cool. It was such a really great story. 
Um, so now I have some fun facts I just wanted to share. Some super fun facts. So Wicked was a smash hit from the get-go. It usually takes um, even the most successful productions two or three years to recoup the original investment. Mm-hmm. And Wicked made back the $14 million that had it had... <laughs> The fourteen million that had put been put into it in just fourteen months. Damn. Yeah. So that's awesome. Also, it's like a dollar an hour. Uh, Jade Chenoweth, that no, Jade Chenoweth. What the fuck are we talking about? I don't know. Um, the original w- ladies that did it were fucking amazing. Yeah. Who was it? It was um. Alina D- Medina. <laughs> Nope, that's not right. Eliza Medina or something? Not even close. And then Chenoweth. Yeah, Kristen or Christine Kristen. or whatever her name was. Yeah, I forget yeah. now. But yeah, she's amazing. Um, also, the secret to Alphaba's emerald skin. So in the in the show, like uh-huh. her skin is bright green and she's like rubbing it on things and it's not going anywhere. Right. And I was like, how the fuck do they do this? So the yeah. secret to her emerald skin is actually MAC makeup. They oh. just put a bunch of fucking eyeshadow all over her. Oh, but my it's this God. Like, um, that is like the. It's called Chroma Cake, and it's a solid water, watercolor cake activated with water. That is and some it's like good an adver- eyeshadow. advertising, MAC. Yeah, right? Good job, guys. 12-hour fucking color. Eat your heart out. Um, so the show requires a lot of power. Um, 12 homes could be powered with the amount of electricity it takes to stage the show every night. Jesus. Um, the production also requires about 250 pounds of dry ice to create all of the dramatic fog. It is a beautiful production and there's some cool fucking. And this is a traveling show. Yeah. Now, now it is. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think. Wow. I I mean, it goes around the country for sure, but I don't know if these people are like from Broadway. That's fair. I is don't, that I, how it works? I never know. I don't really I know, know how I, it works. Sometimes, I, I know sometimes it travels, and then sometimes they just get the license, the rights to yeah, do yeah, it, yeah. and then they get to just do it. Yeah. I don't really know how it works yeah. in Denver. But they were both incredible. Okay. Noted. So, Maguire, Gregory Maguire, Lizzie Maguire, what? Exactly. Uh, Gregory Maguire, the writer of the book, Wicked, the, the book. Um, the book, the book, he fashioned the name of Felba from the initials of Lyman Frank Baum, who wrote oh. the original Wizard of Oz. Yes. Um, so it was LFB, Alphaba, Alphaba, Damn. LFB. I know. How, um, Cause how can you really make up like a really good classic? And that, yeah, that was cool. You know, name for something for that witch. everyone is like, no, she's just the wicked witch. Yeah, and now that makes more sense. Susan, but did she, Linda yeah. the witch? Linda and Glinda. Fucking Linda. Yeah. God damn it, Linda. Listen. Listen, Linda. Listen. Um. So on July twelfth, two thousand eighteen, with its six thousand one hundred and thirty eighth performance, it surpassed Jesus. the show A Chorus Line to become Broadway's sixth longest running show. Damn. And it's fucking pretty n- newish. Yeah. I mean, it's not like Phantom of the Opera or fucking, you know. Cats. Uh, it came out in 2003. So um, a typical performance takes approximately two and a half hours. Yeah. Um, in March 2016, Wicked surpassed $1 billion in total Broadway Jeez. revenue, joining both Phantom of the Opera and The Lion King as the only Broadway shows to do so. Damn. Um, in July 2017, Wicked surpassed The Phantom of the Opera as Broadway's second highest grossing musical. And it just trails behind Lion King. Oh. Um, I figured like it would be somewhere up there with like Hamilton or some shit. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I, yeah, I, don't, I, still have, I have no interest crazy. in seeing Hamilton. I, don't, I still don't even really know what it's about. The music's amazing. I've listened to all the music. But it's like... Um, it's about Alexander Hamilton, but it's like another like different, I mean, I think it's like another, it's just like another viewpoint on the story of Alexander Hamilton, the founding fathers and stuff like that. Okay. Um, I don't know if I would like that, but yeah, the music is amazing. I love musicals though. So that's fair. I can't help myself. No, it's a good thing to like. 
Um, it's good. It's good. So the musical officially opened on June 10th, 2003. Actually, I read a couple different dates. One date said like May something, 2003. It was definitely 2003. But it was at the Curran Theater in San Francisco. And it was just announced that it will be turned into a film in theaters December 2021. Nice. Well, see, now I'll know what happens. Yeah, and then you can go see it and not have to pay $100. I'll even go on discount Tuesday like Hopefully I did for Hopefully it's not Aladdin. like Aladdin, though. <gasps> oh, God. Fucking Aladdin. Jesus Christ, Mary and Joseph. So, in closing, it, Shay. There it is. Wicked is more than a reimagined fairy tale. It's a striking political allegory that begs readers to question the world that they live in. Which, if fucking the whole time, me and my sister were like, holy shit. I hope my mom's listening to this. Are you listening, mom? Are you listening, mom? Did you get any themes? And that's all I got. And that's my show. I like that. I didn't, I haven't. Doesn't it sound, I, don't you want to go see it even I do, more? I do want to go see it. I I say that I don't like musicals, but then when I go to them, I'm like, I like musicals. It's fu- It's like satirical. Which I like. So you I. Know, it's funny. And I've heard it amazing things It kind of like makes fun of it, a li- like musicals a little bit, but it's yeah. obviously a fucking musical. Yeah. I mean. But it like yeah, I, pokes I, fun at I, it. I, I've heard amazing things about Wicked. So I just need to, I just need to bite the bullet and get in my broom and go see it. Let's hop on our brooms and go. Perfect. Perfect. All right. You ready for some murder? Oh, God. I'm ready for the actual wicked people in the world. Whoa. Here Here they come. Is this a wicked ass story or what? It's worse than wicked. It's pretty worse than wicked. Well, can't wait. Better uh, drink up my daiquiri. Let's make another. Okay. Bye. Oh, I might already be inebriated. Yeehaw, yeehaw. <laughs> <laughs> hey, da do, daddy. <laughs> I need to l- lower my tolerance. Because oh, because you don't get as drunk as me? I don't think I do. I'm like five foot two. That's true. And I'm zero five. muscle mass. All right, are you ready? I'm fucking ready. Are you ready, Freddy? I don't think I'm ready for this jelly. No, it's 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 probably not gonna be as bad. But just just this just a gelatinous fork. blood story. Yes, um, but just a fair warning. It is a little, just a little like sensitive. It's not just like, hey, this guy murdered this lady. Um, he also did unfortunate things with her body afterwards. So, okay, just know that. Yep. And if you don't like that, then we'll I see just, you next week. Yes. So I just wanted to give her follow us on Instagram. I just want to give everyone a fair warning just so I'm not a complete fucking asshole. Anyway, so at least you weren't like this story is about puppies. Not just kidding. If puppies were here's turned a, inside here's out. Here's what it is. Here it is. Oh, uh, what did I, you just say? Uh, that's see. Exactly. OK, America. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the story of Jerry Burdos. The I don't think you're ready for this, Jerry. Right? Yeah, which is done. That's the name of the episode. Um, that's write that down. Because okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll forget it. Um, the uh, and he is also known as the shoe fetish slayer. So we got fetishes. Can I tell you something funny? Uh, always. Okay, so <laughs> this is how fucking desperate and ridiculous boys can be tell um, me about out on the it, town. Girl. Tell me about it. And I'm a strong ass woman. I don't take that. You a, it's strong, independent. And I love my Baby. man. And I'm like, go away. So, I'm a witch, bitch. It's, exactly. Anyway, so last night we got back to our hotel after we were at the bars and we were like looking at this one really cute restaurant thing. And there were these two guys on uh, on the street, and they were super friendly. Whatever they were, they weren't. Were they trying to get in your they pants? They weren't creepy. I mean, they were obnoxious a little bit, but yeah, it was fine. Was they drunk. were nice. They were, yeah. they were nice. Yeah. Um, so we were like talking to them, and um, <laughs> one of the guys was talking about how he was like a foot guy, like he's really into feet, and I was like, sweet, bro. I don't really care about that. Come look at all of them in my freezer later. 
ew. <laughs> and so then later, um, I had been feeling weird about my own feet in my shoes because, I don't know, I just had a weird, like, three-toe peep-toe. <laughs> I don't even know what that three means. Three-toe peep-toe. Okay. Shoe, uh, like, wedge on. And so my f- I, like, looked down at my feet and said something about him, like, not thinking about this guy's weird fucking foot fetish. And he was like, if you take your shoe out of your foot, I'll give your toe a kiss or something. Or he's like, I'll kiss your toe. And Wait, I was like, Take your no. shoe First out of, of your all, foot. First of all, I've already okay. told you I have a boyfriend. Second of all, don't ever ask anyone that. <laughs> ever. I'm good on that. Thanks. I'm not that self-conscious about my feet that I need a stranger to kiss my toe. And then we're like, okay, bye-bye, guys. Okay. We got to go back to our hotel. Yeah. Leave us alone. And it was fine. Well, then that is a great lead into the story I'm about to tell you. Yeah, fucking foot fetish. Yeah. Well, maybe Weird it's one stuff. of Jerry's counterparts. All right, here we go. All right. Burdos was born in Webster, South Dakota, and his mother had wanted a girl and often ignored and belittled him because, well, he wasn't one. That's so, kind of like how a felda grew up. Look Alpha this. by Fucking me. simpatico. Look at this. Boom. She was rejected by her father. Yeah, this was with his mom. It, she, it didn't have a whole lot of information on his dad, but um, she She's also like... very similar. Yeah, so the the mom just hated that he was a... She wanted... She had and all he bo- became she had wicked. All, yeah, so she had but all really. boys, and so... Oh. She, uh, he, yeah, now she, he really is the wicked witch of the West Side. He's the real one. Yeah, he is the real, real one. Real one. Yeah, and he, and she also like uh, physically abused him too. So kind of some fucked up shit. So not good, not good. So he had a fetish for women's shoes from the age of five. He spent his teen years in and out of a psychotherapy and state hospitals, hospitals, and he began to stalk local women as a teenager, knocking down or choking them unconscious and fleeing with their shoes. So he would what? like strangle them, knock them out, and just take their shoes. Yeah, just like a just a firm pressure, just so that they stop breathing for a second. Didn't kill him. They no reports of like him actually killing anybody until the sixties. But um, yeah, this was when he was a young boy, a young lad. Yeah, so not the most stable of fellows, unfortunately. Oh, fellow. Uh, yeah. So at age 17, he was sent to the Oregon State Hospital psychiatric ward after he confessed to holding a girl at knife point in a hole he had dug in the side of the hill for the purpose of keeping a sex slave or just keeping multiple sex slaves. Um, the, there he forced her to pose nude while he took pictures. Uh, but they were really just up closes of her feet? Uh, no, these were... He claims that they were actual like nudie. Nudie oh, okay. pictures. Sure. Um, but who knows? They could have just been his feet. Uh, nude feet. Who knows? Um, and uh, and Jerry was released from the hospital after nine months, even though it was clear he had developed a need to act out his violent fantasies towards women. According to the, his hospital records, his violence toward women developed from a deep hatred he felt for his mom. Don't they all? It's not good. He was just wanted to be a little mama's boy. He did. That's he just wanted to be. She shunned him to the corners to be the little girl that he that, wanted to be. That she wanted him to be. Yes. Essentially. Mm. So jump forward a little bit. Um. So once out of the house, hospital, the hospital, the hospital, he finished high school and became a, an electronics technician. So and he was in the ward before high school. Yeah, so he was he was admitted at, at seventeen. Oh, okay. So, so once out of the hospital, he he finished high school. So it probably was like for like a really rough summer camp kind of thing, you know. Yeah. Um. So and whether he refrained it wasn't from acting, camp on Awana, I'll tell you that sure wasn't hold you in our hearts. Yes. Sorry. Go on. <laughs> um. Whether he refrained from acting out on his obsessions over the next years or he just didn't get caught is unknown. So um, he got married and moved to Portland and he and his wife had two children. And Jerry's relationship with his wife began to falter after he approached her dressed in women's underwear. Up to that point, she had gone along with his strange bedroom habits, including his request that she walk around the house nude except for a pair of high-heeled pumps while doing housework. So, a little fucked up. 
Oh. Just a little. Uh, but you know, to each their own. At that point, she didn't think like he was like hurting anybody. She just like, this guy's kind of weird. I'm not really into this. Wait, he wanted her to vacuum the house and pumps? Yeah, or yeah, yeah. he wanted to vacuum the house and pumps? No, no, no. She, he, he like requested that. Hey, that's, she, that's kind of kinky, though. I mean, right. So it's just like, it's not that <laughs> so out in left field, especially now. It's just but, like, people are like, I want to put ham on your face and jerk off on your belly button. Like, <laughs> people are like, <laughs> I mean, with the. <laughs> and then I'll lick your toe. Yeah. So, I mean, like, at the, at the time, it was probably very weird to her. Where she was like, because again, true. like, you don't know, but like, now you hear, like, you can get, like, you Google, like, mm, backwards, whatever, and <laughs> type in whatever. <laughs> I t- t- type in ham and wiener and see what you get. Like, who fucking knows? And I don't want to ever Google that. <laughs> <laughs> right. But you probably would Do get. Do not Google that. You probably Do would not. Get, like, a thousand pages of just a ton of different fetishes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for her, like, this is like, whoa. Okay, he yeah, wants yeah. me to be fucking naked put high heel well, I things on what and like a lot of like the websites were like this was a sicko i'm like well it wasn't i mean like yeah it was a little weird maybe and if she felt uncomfortable with in it in the like, circumstance yes because the of his other things 1000 but she didn't know about them and like but yeah it was like okay it was odd it knowing what he did like yeah it was fucking red flag behavior but like if you told him like oh so what do you like do you like yeah i like do like what i said before i'm not gonna repeat that but ham on the face. And she's and he's like, um, what do you like to do? Like, oh, I like to have my lady strip all the way down and then just walk around in high heels. And they're like, <laughs> that's true. That that's it? That's all you like her to we do? We don't have yeah. sex. Yeah. I just watch her I vacuum. I just watch her vacuum the hell. That is really weird. <laughs> right? I mean, but if you, but it's so weird that like fucking. So that would be like nice foreplay maybe. Right, but like. But not a, but just like, the fetish. But like to think just like that. just 40 years ago, that was so risque and that was like obscene like it is yeah. how dare you sir um so anyway not to make you her situation not to put any like fucking humor or whatever like in her i'm sure it was awful and i'm sure she felt uncomfortable and it was shitty because it said he sounds i mean it sounds like he really was fucked up in the head not because of that A creep yeah yeah anyway i just wanted to point that out anyway okay so uh, rejected by her lack of understanding of his need to wear women's underwear, he retreated to his <laughs> workshop. No longer intimate, the two remained married, and despite his wife discovering pictures of nude women and an odd molded breast among her husband's possessions. It does not just say... Just one? Right, just one. It does not say if it was, like, with, like, it was molded with clay or, like, fucking a macaroni picture. It he does just, not... Like, held yeah. up in the mirror, like, Buffalo Bill or something. Right? And there actually is some things, too, that they, um, there's some sources that say, like, Buffalo Bill is also modeled after him as well. Oh, um, okay. But, which, you know, that actually kind of makes sense. What, what his That's what I originally thought when you first started talking about him. I was right. like, he already reminds me of, like, Buffalo Bill. Yeah, like, would you fuck me? I'd no, fuck sir. Me. Fuck me so hard. Um... Anyway, uh, yikes. yikes. Okay, so, but yeah, so it doesn't say like what, like if, what weird arts and crafts projects he made this breast out of. So he would steal shoes and lace undergarments. The stained glass. Just, yeah. <laughs> um, he would steal <laughs> shoes and lace undergarments during night prowling raids. He kept all the stolen objects in a super secret garage that he would uh, not allow his wife to enter without announcing her arrival over the over an intercom. In th- yeah, that's not fucking weird. <laughs> right? Don't enter, Barbara. All right? Just go buy another broom. Unless you're in naked with a vacuum in your right? hand, bitch. Then that's fine. But then avert your eyes, okay? So in 1967, um, Jerry followed a woman to her home because he liked her shoes. Duh. I mean, come on. So he followed a woman to her home because he liked her shoes. He then broke into her house while she was asleep. And raped her before strangling her to to the point of unconsciousness. So he didn't kill her. And then he left. Because he liked her shoes. Yeah, right. So then he left with some some of her shoes. So, like, was this her? If this was his, like, excuse or this was, like, legit, he really liked their shoes. And then he just decided to rape them because he liked his, their shoes so much. I think there was a lot of dark, sinister shit going down. I think down. he was fucked yeah. up in the brain. He I don't know why I'm trying up. to figure it I, out. Yeah, you can't make sense out of insanity. But this, this, it was just kind of his trademark that he always took 
some their shoes like after he committed a crime or or something like that but it sounds like it was always kind of sexually driven it was just a fetish he had yeah. so it got it got him off so um so then we jump to the murders so linda slauson uh 19 a door-to-door encyclopedia saleswoman who knocked on jerry's door in, J- in january of 1968 Jerry lured her to the garage where he, where while his wife and children were in the house, knocked her out with a wooden plank and strangled her. He dressed her in different female undergarments and shoes he had stolen, arranged her body in, pro- in provocative poses, and used a hacksaw to cut off her left foot, which he kept in a freezer and used to model his collection of high heel shoes. Oh he- <laughs> my God. What? I mean, the this fuck? guy. I mean, to me, oh look, he's snuggling you. So, I mean, I think for someone to go from not murdering anybody, I mean, I'm no detective, but f- from not going like not like he that he obviously did horrible things like rape people and, um, or at least allegedly he raped that one girl, but who knows if he did that to to multiple people, but. He goes from not killing anybody to not just killing them, but then hacking her foot off in the home while his fucking family was there, probably just eating like fucking cupcakes and playing hopscotch or whatever the fuck you did in the 60s. And you. <laughs> and they're playing hopscotch. They're playing hopscotch and jacks um, and smoking cigarettes right in their baby's faces. Um, and then he cut her fucking foot off and just and then just like like fucking like a ken barbie doll i'm like oh ken i'm gonna go to the store today and put, <laughs> like put the fucking like i don't even have any words walked it. it around his fucking room like, can you imagine like it's like when you had like two dolls and they like met and you like got to like fucking i don't know yeah like, make them meet yeah, and like make them talk meet. to each other yeah just so like well, he was like foots. oh my god that looks so good and like just put her fucking oh i, I just can't even oh my god so that was that was murder number one oh okay so Next we have and she, uh, next we have Karen Sprinkler, um, not Sprinkler. There's no fucking L on that. Um, <laughs> Karen Sprinker. Sprinker, yeah. Next we have Karen Sprinker, 19, abducted uh, abducted at gunpoint from a parking lot outside a department store in May 1968. Jerry uh, was dressed in woman's clothes during this attack, so he brought her to the garage, made her try on his collection of undergarments, and posed while he photographed her raped her and strangled her by hanging her by her neck from a pulley. Ugh. Oh so my. Yeah. like how do you think of this? Uh, it gets worse. Okay, so he had sex with the body on several occasions and cut off her breast to make plastic molds. I warned everybody. Just r- yeah, I warned everybody. Afterward, he tied the body to a six-cylinder car engine with a nylon cord and threw it in the Wa- Willamette River. Yeah. He pretty, was a dramatic pretty, motherfucker. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. It's like, I'm not only going to dis- but I think he probably tried to do something heavy to try and weigh the body down. Is what he was probably trying to do. But can you imagine- With the car? It's- right? like, but can you imagine me like, you know what? What do I use? I know. I will take this car engine and tie it to her inconspicuously and throw her out the goddamn Oh, know, it was car. just the engine? Just the engine. I- f- So this is what I'm- pictured that when you said that i pictured he had a car he tied you said engine i was thinking like the tailpipe oh that he tied her to the like tailpipe put it in drive drove oh. it off a cliff with her tied to it like what like a fucking like a wedding can yeah like, but it was her body without legs he is all about the dramatics oh it was just a car engine i got it now okay <laughs> okay that's fucking that's i mean come so on who doesn't basic. have just what a, a basic car bitch put a basic fucking cop out <laughs> oh my god that sounds horrible i mean jesus christ okay so moving on so that's the point yeah jan susan uh whitney 23 um that's her whole name yep jan jan susan, susan whitney. whitney yep it sounds like like a fucking reporter this is jan I susan thought you were talking about three girls and i was like why did she not say and no nope, oh, just that's three, someone's three, one name three first names um 23 it was uh she was a motorist whose car broke down on the interstate five between salem and albany oregon on november 26 of 1968 jerry offered to drive her to his home with the excuse of letting 
her call tow truck there. While still in the car, he strangled her with a leather strap and raped her post-mortem. Um, oh he kept God. the body hanging from a pulley in the garage for several days. And again, I don't understand how this wife was never going to be like, you know what? I need some garbage bags and goes out like I, but I I mean, there's a lot of movies I feel like that are a couple different movies I'm thinking of that are kind of like, right. I forget the movie that they like pulled them on a pulley system and like hang them. Yeah. In their house. But it's just insane to me that, you know, he had whatever this, which I'm assuming he just had so much fear in that home that. She never went into that garage. Can you just imagine, like, just never going to the garage? And how... Ever. Yeah, she was in denial, uh, yeah. obviously. There were some rumors that sh- they felt like she was in on it, just because they are like, how did you not fucking come on now? Well, she probably didn't want it to happen to her, so she kept right. her fucking so mouth there, but shut. She, but she claims... And let him take pictures of her feet. Right, So, but she claims that, that never, like, she didn't know anything about it. Um, but who knows? Um... So he kept the body hanging from the pulley in the garage for several days, during which he dressed, photographed, and had sex with it. This time... From the pulley? Yeah. So it must not have been a very big pulley. It's a new Fifty Shades of Grey move. Ugh. Here, girl, get on this pulley okay. system. Just okay. kidding. Maybe he was the first weird. John Grey. I don't know. Um, eh. But, like, in a weird, gross, backwards way. Um, yeah, in a very... <laughs> Yeah. This time, Jerry cut off one of her breasts, made it into a risin mold, uh, made made a risin mold out of it, um, to which then he used it as a paperweight. Uh, afterward, he tied the body to a piece of railroad iron and threw it into the willament, um, along with Schlossen's foot, which had rotted. So you remember that girl who he cut the foot oh, off? Oh, this foot's rust- yep. rotting. I better get rid of that. All the toenails are Smelling falling off. Smelling weird in here for the foot. Yep. All the toenails are falling off, and I got to get rid of this one. It's so. not pretty anymore. Mm-mm-mm. It's not a pretty foot. I can't Look play dolls with this. Um, pretty foot. Pretty foot. He's such a pretty foot. Pretty foot. So um, these next couple, these next two girls actually were very lucky and got away. Uh, Sharon Wood, 24. He attempted to abduct um, at gunpoint from the basement floor of a parking garage in, in Portland on April 21st, 1969. But she luckily got away. And Gloria Jean Smith was 15 at the time, but she was... Um, she att- he attempted to abduct her on April 22nd. Of So the next day, he attempted to adu- abduct her. Um, the next girl was not so lucky. Linda C- uh, Celine, hopefully I'm saying that right, 22, was abducted from a shopping mall parking lot on April 23rd. So he did this like in three fucking days. And he, fi- he third time's a charm, I guess. I guess so. A dark kind of charm. Jerry brought her to his garage wa- where he raped and strangled her and played with her corpse. I don't know really what that means, but I can only assume. Uh. He decided to not cut off her breasts off because... That's nice. I'm sorry. He decided to not cut off her breasts because they were too pink. Whatever that means. And oh instead. Oh, my God. Um, instead, he drove an electrical current through the body in an attempt to make it jump, which failed. Afterward, he tied the body to a car transmission with a nylon cord and threw it into the river. Wait, why did he want to jump the body? It doesn't say. Because her boobs were pink? I <laughs> guess. That makes no sense. <laughs> I, none of it makes any sense. Everything that he's doing doesn't make any fucking sense. Um, uh, uh, also, it was noted like Jerry, um, at least he claimed that he did. Jerry would dress up in high heels and masturbate after committing a murder for each one. Because he felt so sexy. I guess he did. He's like, yes. what would Marilyn think? I'd fuck me. I'd fuck me. Um, he is like Buffalo Bill. He, yeah, like, he kinda, he's just a, he was he was a twisted motherfucker. So, so in nineteen in May nineteen sixty nine, uh, a fisherman found the body of Celine and a uh, sprink. I'm gonna say sprinkler, but it's not <laughs> sp- sprinker oh. in the Long Tom River. They began interviewing students at the University of Oregon. Some students mentioned a man who had asked several students on dates. Apparently, the man had also talked about the women who were being discovered in the river. Of course, that man was Jerry. 
The police obtained a search warrant for Jerry's home, and inside of the garage um, he had made his studio, they found countless photographs of dead women in various states of dress and dismemberment, as well as some of their severed limbs. The police also found copper wire that was determined to have been cut with the same tool that cut the cords used to tie the bodies. Jerry was arrested, and he made a full confession. On June 28th of 1969, Jerry pled guilty to the to first to three first degree murders, Sprinker, Whitney, and Celine, and was sit- was sentenced to three consecutive life terms of imprisonment in, in Oregon State Penitentiary. Um, though he confessed of Slauson's murder, Jerry was neither tried or convicted of it be- for it because he didn't make and ca- or keep photographs of the body, unlike the other cases, uh, but only of her foot. Whitney's body was found a month after yes. Jerry's convention, con- convention, um, conviction about he a mile a downstream. From, he was at a His convention. foot convention. A foot convention about a mile downstream from where he said he had thrown it. So while incarcerated, Jerry had piles of women's shoes catalogs in his cell. He wrote to major companies asking for them and claimed they were his substitute for pornography. He lodged countless appeals, which again, like, why would they? Why would they give it to him? That's what I don't understand. I never understood that when I was trying to go through all the research, and I couldn't f- find where they were like, yeah, no, we we had to give it to him, you know, for his boobs. Like, I don't understand that, but whatever. Yeah, I don't know. It was fucking. I don't know. A different time. I, yeah. Um, he lodged countless appeals, um, including one which he alleged that a photogra- photograph ticket of him with one of his victim's corpses could not be proved could not prove his guilt because it was not the body of a person he was convicted of killing in 1955 the parole board told jerry that he would never be released so Good. yeah so his victims were he was convicted of three confessed confessed to four um but 12 women went missing in in like that era so who knows if there were more but he was only convicted of three um, Jerry died in prison on March 28th of 2006 from liver cancer. At the time of his death, he was the longest incarcerated inmate in the Oregon Department of Corrections, a total of 37 years from 1969 to 2006. Yeah. And that's kind of the twisted tale of Mr. Jerry. He's gross. Burnos. He's disgusting. Yeah. He's a gross boy. He was pretty disgusting. Yeah. Ew. Yeah. Not 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 good folks. Not somebody you want to have at your barbecue. You guys love each other out there, okay? Love up. Love up. Okay. We got scared there for a second. I thought I didn't press the record button. Oh, my God. We were going to have to act this whole thing out again. I do not want to listen to that story again about no. foot murders. Gross. And pulley systems. Anyway. Lots of pulley systems. I'm going to go watch fucking My Little Pony after this. You're going to need to to freshen up your soul. Thank God it's still light out. I feel safer. Uh-huh. I mean, that's true. That's true. Um, Yeah. So that's well, my little. That's your crime story. That's my quick little crime story. Of- Jesus. I hope you don't roll that again. Oh, I know. Surely it'll get I- worse. It'll get- it's only going to get worse. I thought Only the blood running with the blood in their eyes was bad enough. Right? This is a totally different... Ugh, gross. Ugh. Did you know then last week's story? What? The word fellow was also used. Fellow? Wait, did you use fellow again? You did at some point in this story. But anyway, the word fellow. Huh. I don't remember. Hello, that. fellow. Anakin was just cuddling with me, and that never, ever happens, the dog. I know, you're accepted into the pack now. But then he moved and went over to Shay. That's okay. But that was that hey, was a that's, quick... That's was, progress. That's but I was petting him, and it looked like he was like, what are you fucking doing? But it's probably because I'm scared to pet dogs now, so... I know, you kind of do have a phobia of it. I'm just like... It's not uh, your fault. Don't... Hurt it. Anyway. No, so, fly. uh... Sweet. Guess it's time. It's time to roll. We did it was like a quickie, but it's okay. Sometimes so, that's all you need. Sometimes you just need a quickie. That's that's wink it. winky. With a wink winky. With a wink and winky. Yes. Yeah, not as many dick jokes in what this if, episode. <laughs> <laughs> what if Winky's winked? 
um, then nobody would ever touch them because what the fuck? <laughs> Jesus. I want everyone to picture that right now. Every- Can you hear it? <laughs> Next Sunday, you'll just be hearing like this silently like, my ears are burning. Oh, no, that's just everybody vomiting silently in their cars or general yeah, areas. You better roll that dice. I'm going to roll the dice. Here I go. Here I go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, I got me some cooking this week. <gasps> oh, 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 boop, boop, boop. All right, your I turn. Don't I don't know why. <laughs> five. One, two, Haven't had three, five four, in a while. Five. It's some science. Let's see what is it going to yes. be. Is it going to be about the climate change, or is it going to be about the climate change? It's <laughs> probably nope. It's not. I have my science thing, and Done. you guys are going to get your socks blown off. Sweet. I think for this food segment, we're going to do the one where you're going to read me a recipe. Is that yes. okay? Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Fuck I'll yeah. do whatever you want. Because I feel like it's way funnier for me to do it because I have no fucking idea what I'm doing. That's true. Hope you guys like that. That'll be fun. Okay. Okay. Can I give a shout out as I look through my mesh screen? Boop. I want to shout out to all our listeners. Thanks for listening. Um, you're follow kind us on of Instagram if you want. Tell your friends if you if you like us, if you like a episode, if you think it resonates with someone you know, just share it with them. Do it. Leave us you a comment you if to. you want. Leave us a voice message. Yeah. You can follow us on Instagram. You can send us an email, 30ish at gmail.com. If you want to get super old-fashioned, you can mail us a letter. Oh, my God. That would be fun. You can send it with a pigeon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, get really even crazier. I feel like Fort Collins legit has like a carrier pigeon. Thing. I'm Where not, and why aren't we using this? If that really I'm not thing? joking. I I actually kind of believe. Well, you. I know there is a building that. Well, it's okay. You know where the rafting place is? Um, yeah. Which Paddler's one? Pub and shit. It's like kind I of over so. by there. There's a building that says like the Pigeon Express or something. Yeah, and right. I don't know if they still do it, but that'd be fucking cool. Uh, yeah, that'd be a good nostalgia. No. Speaking of foot fetish, I think I'm getting a bunion. Oh, perfect. So I don't even know. Too what bad that old is, Jerry's not here. He'd cut it right off and put it in the freezer. Jerry, will you just cut my bunion off but don't kill me? Thanks. Like, no, that's not Too how Too bad this you works. died in jail, you goddamn freak. Anyway, wow. all right. You're cooking. You're fooding. I'm fooding. All right. Fooding so I'm picking a recipe You're for you to a cook. Recipe. Mm-hmm. That's going to be funny and fun. It'll be a good one, I think. And then I'll do science. Perfect. Hashtag save the earth. (laughs) Always and forever. Always and forever. Okay, we got to go. Bye. Love you. Follow us on Instagram if you want. And bye. Like us.